morning, another sunrise with Pastor Hayton time. I surely enjoy spending a few minutes with you each morning, as I often say, and I just try to, you know, keep it brief so that I don't bore you or annoy you in any way, but sometimes I just go on and on and on and on, don't I? But I'm going to try to keep it a little bit brief today as I talk about an experience that I had a few years ago that totally changed my outlook on possessions. I think that it's just natural that uh, we want to possess things in life. There's something about the hand that reaches out to grasp things, and we just feel like sometimes that uh, possessions are important to us, and indeed there are some things that we do need to possess. Uh, you know, we, we need uh, the basics of life, and there's certainly nothing wrong with working hard to acquire the basics of life, a roof over our head. In our society today, we just about need an automobile to get around in. Uh, we want furniture to sit on, a good bed to sleep on. Uh, we just, you know, desire a good cook stove so we can uh, cook our meals and place to sit down and eat those meals. So I look around at our home and I find that we have furniture and uh, some of that furniture came from the thrift stores and other came from garage sales and some of it we were privileged to buy when we passed her down in Lowry City and had church members that had a furniture store and treated us real well on furniture and uh, we acquired a lovely dining room uh, outfit that we're still using today after 30 years and, and uh, some coffee table and end tables and the couch and furniture in the living room we bought about 20 years ago when we came back to Kansas City from Colorado. So we don't have anything new in our house, and yet it's very attractive, I think, and, and it's very functional, and we can have just anybody in, sit down, enjoy the furnishings of our home without any embarrassment. And I don't think there's anything wrong with possessions that we consider a necessary part of our everyday life. But it seems like we just enjoy getting things that we consider to be valuable and many of those things they're hidden away somewhere or on a closet shelf or in the back of the closet. And a few years ago I was able, even though I'm not a musician, I was able to acquire some fine musical instruments. I bought an old Gibson guitar that I saw advertised in the Quincy, Illinois newspaper one day, a nice old flat top Gibson for $65 back in the 70s, and that guitar today would be worth a quarter many, many times that amount. I was able to buy a little Gibson electric guitar that I found in a pawn shop one time and thought it was a good buy. And then there was another guitar that I had purchased somewhere. I'm not even sure just where I did get that guitar, but Nonetheless, I had these instruments, so oh, I do remember two, but I won't go into it. It was a nice Takamini 12 string. And I had those stored in our church in Colorado Springs, and there were times I would play them maybe doing opening exercise at, at school and all, so I just kept my guitars over there in a room off the pulpit up on a shelf. I remember driving to the school one morning, and Notice the back door of the church is kind of flapping back and forth in the breeze. And when I saw that door open, the wind blowing it back and forth, my heart sank. I knew that surely something had happened. So I parked my car. I went running into the church building. And the first thing I did was go up to the pulpit and open the door of the little room beside the pulpit. And it was cleaned out. Burglars had taken my prized musical instruments. Well, my heart was a little broken. I, I really felt bad that my musical instruments had been stolen. But, you know, I, I came to the realization that they were just merely possessions. And, uh, you know, it wasn't the end of the world by any means. Uh, they could be replaced. I did get an insurance check to cover uh, the replacement uh, somewhat, I don't think it covered the full value, didn't really come out too good on that because church generally gave me a, a pretty nice bonus at Christmas and that year, since I had gotten some insurance coverage on my guitars, I guess they decided I didn't need much of a bonus, so my bonus was just a fraction of what it generally was, so it really didn't come out as good as I would like to have, but you know it just totally changed my outlook on possessions and 
I realized what Christ had to say when he said that we were to lay up our treasures in heaven where thieves will not break in and steal, nor fire will destroy or moths will corrupt. And you know, ever since then, I've tried to lay up treasures in heaven. I realized that the greatest value of our life is what we send ahead. And I just feel like that we need to heed the admonition of Christ and not be so concerned about the accumulation of the treasures of this world, but rather just lay up our treasures in heaven. I feel like my life has been a whole lot more blessed since I uh, have discovered that, that possessions really don't amount to too much and they don't really mean a lot to us. And I believe that we ought to be careful how we value our possessions and realize that there are better things that we can do than to just accumulate the things of this world. We can so live our life, and I don't have time to tell you how I feel that we send our treasures up ahead, but uh, there are ways that you can lay up treasures in heaven instead of laying up treasures on earth. Well, that's my experience. That's what changed my outlook on treasures, and that's probably why I don't have too much today. I really don't care about accumulating a lot of stuff that my kids will either fight over or worry about what to do with when I'm gone. Well, let me pray with you. Heavenly Father, don't let us become attached to the treasures of this world. Life is so fleeting. They can be taken so quickly. Lord, we realize that we can lay up treasures in heaven. And Lord, they'll be awaiting us when we get to that wonderful city. So help us, dear Lord, to have the right attitude toward the temporal and the materialistic things of this life. Bless us throughout the day. Have your way. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thanks for being with us. We'll see you tomorrow on Sunrise with Pastor Hayton. Goodbye, and we love you all.